Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through the process of repairing an extension cord. So, let's get into it. Okay, so when it comes to repairing an extension cord, it's a pretty straightforward process. First of all, a lot of people would probably ask, well, why are you going to take the time to repair an extension cord? Just throw it out and get a new one. Depending on the type of extension cord you have, these things can be big bucks, okay? The one that I'm going to show you today, it fell victim to the rabbits in my yard over the winter time, okay? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that this is a quick and easy fix, just about anybody can do it. <clears throat> with that said, you're dealing with something that's going to handle electricity, okay? I'm not an electrician, I'm just a dude who's out here to give you some advice, okay? Um, so before we get into it, just a couple of things that you're going to need to have on hand, all right? First things first, for this fix here, I'm going to use a pair of side cutters, okay? And these are going to be used to actually cut that extension cord uh, where the broken sides are. I'm then going to use a pair of wire strippers here and the intent behind those wire strippers, ugh, there we go, how you can see them, uh, is so that we can, we can strip the wires to be able to reconnect them properly. Now, on that note of reconnecting them, a few different ways you can do this. Uh, you could use marettes uh, or wire nuts, which I wouldn't recommend for an extension cord at all. We are going to use these fancy things right here. Um, and basically, these are heat shrink solder connections. These are super cool, and I wish I would have found out about these a long time ago. Basically, what happens is we'll connect, we'll, we'll strip back and connect the broken wires. And then we use one of these fellas here. Hopefully, the camera will pick that up. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, there it is. Um, and you can see with this particular device here, you've got these two uh, blue pieces, which are uh, basically like little glue balls, but in the center, that's where the magic happens. That's actually a little tiny ball of solder. And what happens is when we apply heat to this connector, it'll actually melt. So you get heat shrink tubing, which is watertight. So you get a good mechanical connection there, but then you're also gonna get a solid solder connection out of that little piece in the middle, okay? So uh, good thing that we have that. Uh, I recommend an X-Acto knife because again, we're gonna have to peel back a little bit of that insulation. There we go. Uh, we're gonna have to peel a little bit of that, that insulation back on the cord. And that's something that the wire strippers might not necessarily handle. And then lastly, we've got to go ahead and apply some heat. Now, for something like this, you could use an actual heat gun, okay? Um, the thing is, with my particular heat gun, I don't have the little cap. There's supposed to be a little attachment uh, that kind of cups around, almost like a, like a little can or something like that. And that's designed to channel as much of the heat as possible at the connection so it melts a little bit better. Instead, now this might be a little controversial, <laughs> I'm gonna use one of these little butane pen torches here, okay? These things are pretty slick, um, and I have used these with this particular setup before. Okay, so I should have a pretty good measure of success. Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, and get to work here. And actually, I'll just show you guys real quick. Oh, come on, you bugger. There it is. Yeah, so there you go, guys. You can see exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, this thing is slick. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully you can see my extension cord, and I'm serious, this was all rabbit damage here. Uh, they were pretty bad this year. So first things first, I'm gonna start actually uh, by just cutting these corners off the end here, okay? So, grab my side cutters, I'm gonna locate kind of where my where my damage spots are here, and I'm gonna cut just beyond those on either side. So first one, there we go. Now I'm gonna go to this side here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Okay, so now, <laughs> that's our damage section of wire. Okay, now we can toss this out. Boop. Okay, now we're focusing on, on the good sides here. Um, now, one thing that I wanna do here is, I also have some additional heat shrink tubing here, okay? And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put this over top to kind of act as that external coating of the extension cord. So even though I'm using these solder heat shrink connections on the wires themselves, this is just that extra little bit of security here. Now. Now that I've cut the cord though, you've got to slip this on now because if you don't do this now, you're going to have to cut the cord down the road and then uh, and then try to slip this on or you're going to destroy this in the process. So first things first, let's just pop this guy in here. Perfect. Okay, and I'm just going to run that down to the end here. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my utility knife and I'm going to just peel back some of this insulation. So I'm just going to make a little slice here. And of course, when you're using, you know, something like an X-Acto knife, you want to make sure that you've got your mind on task because these things are super sharp, okay? Either that or, you know, wear a pair of cut-resistant gloves. 
Perfect. Okay, so now I should be able to spread this piece open. Perfect. Alright. Go. And you may have to cut a little bit more of this insulation back um, as you're working. You're going to kind of get a feel for how much of the wires you have to expose. Um, now, with this particular cord, I just have two conductors in here, a black and a white. Some extension cords, like my big guys outside, the really expensive ones, um, you're going to have three wires inside of them. So with those, again, I uh, just got to make sure that you're, you know, you're peeling back enough insulation and that you have enough connectors here to be able to make that repair. So let's get that peeled back on that side. We do the same thing on this side, roughly the same distance around. Excellent, there we go. So I'm, I'm about equal on both sides. I'm pretty close at least anyway. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my wire strippers. Now, there's a bunch of little holes on the wire stripper here and that's gonna correspond to the gauge of wire that we have here. So I'm taking a look, what am I using here? It's probably like, 14 gauge maybe? Let's try it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna strip a section back with these. Now all you do to use these is you just pinch them like that. I like to go around just a couple of times just to help score that wire and then just pull it through. And there we go, there's my there's my exposed wire on the end. Maybe it'll pick it up. Yeah, no, maybe so. Okay, well anyway, you guys get the idea. You can see it from here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side here. There we go. And again, I'm trying to keep the wires approximately equal length. Pull that through. Perfect. Okay, so that side's done. Let's go ahead and get the other side here. There we go. Okay, perfect. All right. So now we've got two sections of the cord here. All right. Yeah, there we go. And you can see we've exposed both the wires. Now, it's very important. When we connect these, we got to go white to white and black to black. Okay, if we reverse these, uh-uh, bad things are gonna happen, okay? So, now I'm gonna go into my kit here, and um, I'll maybe put a link in the description below to these. There's so many different kinds, so many different brands, but they're all essentially the same thing. The ones I'm using are the Kuject brand. Again, I, you know, <laughs> no, no affiliation to these guys one way or another, uh, but again, just to let you know kind of what options are out there. So I'm gonna grab two of these. I'm going to slip these fellas onto the ends here. Okay, now I don't have enough to come out the end here, so yeah, I'm probably going to strip just a little bit more off the cord so I can get these all the way on here. Okay, so I'll just do that to this one here. Yeah, that's pretty close. I think I can work with that. Same thing here. I don't want to like I don't want to expose too much of this wire, uh, just because I want to make sure I have enough heat shrink to be able to cover everything that I've stripped off afterwards. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with this one here is I'm going to take my white wire here, and I'm going to kind of just try to intertwine these two together. You know what? Ah, I might need a little bit more wire here. Yeah, it's a little bit more exposed. Insulation here more. Yeah, there we go. Now we got lots lots of room to work with. Sometimes you just have to twist the tips of these to be able to get them on there. Yeah, perfect. Now I've got lots of room to work with. Okay, and now what I like to do with these, uh, and again, your technique's going to vary a little bit with these, I kind of just insert them together and try to give them a little twist around each other like this. Okay, remember, we, we've got a bit of a physical connection here now, but I want to get that solder ball lined up right in the middle as best as I can because that is what's going to make all the difference. Okay, so that lined up there okay again maybe you guys can see this here we'll see if the camera focuses yeah there we go okay and again even from this camera hopefully you guys can see i got that solder ball right in the middle so now what i'm gonna do is attempt to not burn my basement down <laughs> i'm gonna take my pencil torch and my lighter here i'm gonna fire this guy up Perfect, and there we go. All right, let's let the magic happen here. So I'm gonna hold this like a safe distance apart. And it's very important if you're using a flame like this, you don't wanna just hold it one spot. You wanna be passing it around here. So I'm just gonna start doing this here. And already, perfect. I can see the heat shrink starting to move around there, which is awesome. I try to get the heat shrink on either side of the wire to start binding first. Yeah, that's perfect. And now I start hitting that center section of solder. This. and 
eventually what will happen is that ball of solder will actually just melt. Now, if you read the instructions that come with this, um, if the ball of solder doesn't melt, that's actually okay too, because you've got such a strong connection here that nothing really is gonna be able to penetrate through this anyway. Awesome. Yep, there we go. And I think you can kind of see it starting to flow just a little bit there. Perfect, so I think that one's good. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna just let that cool for a second. Yeah, and I can definitely see some solder started to run down there. So that's awesome. That's exactly what we wanna have. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the other side here. So I'll grab my other connector here. Same thing, I'm just gonna go back to my wires here. And of course, you wanna let this cool off a little bit because it is gonna be hot. You just did, you just exposed it to a flame. This side on here, perfect. Just like we did there. solder ball section over the middle perfect there we go all right all right and just like the last one same thing I'm gonna fire up my pen torch apply heat to both sides we're just about done hard parts over <laughs> There we go, perfect. Okay, excellent. So now I know I've got both of those properly connected. I can see that my solder's flowed a little bit. Awesome. So again, give that a second to cool. And then next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip my heat shrink all the way over here to be able to kind of finish off the repair. And then same thing, now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to apply heat shrink to this and uh, that should be repair completed. Perfect. Okay, folks. And just like that, now we've got a proper repair to the cord here. So what I'll probably end up doing now is just plugging this into an outlet, plugging in a light or something like that, just to test it. Um, but I mean, given the fact that we've got the heat shrink on, there's glue inside that heat shrink, this thing is completely sealed. And now I feel confident putting it back into use. Okay. So folks, if this video was helpful, again, please consider giving me a like, a subscribe. Uh, it goes a long way to helping out the channel. So folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Take care and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.